We've got one of the for most foremost thinkers in the space. We've got a lot of updates for you. We're going to talk about social media and music. You're at the place, Pensado's place. Hey, everybody. Glad to have you back this week. Uh, this is a special week for me. I've got my, my good buddy Bobby Ozinski on the show today and can't wait to pick his brain about a number of things. Um, Bobby has the uh, incredible distinction of being the first person to ever write anything about me in my whole career. You would call that a distinction? In some, in some sense of the word. <laughs> it's not your turn to speak yet, Herb. It is my turn. Now, if you want to enhance the, the uh, man, I have something to say, but just forget it. Just put a laugh there when you edit this thing. But um, anyway, it's going to be a great day. We've, I've got a ton of questions for Bobby. I've been talking to him before the show, and I don't know if we can pack it all in, but we're going to certainly try. We've got a lot of information for you today. Uh, as always, it's been a fun week for me, not you. You've had an incredibly, <laughs> I feel so bad for you. You've just been so uh, overworked this week, but is it paying off? I was just waiting for my turn to speak. <laughs> <laughs> do I have permission? Don't do that to okay, me. Okay, I'm great. having a good day. Okay, great. Well, I'm I here to. I, I think I pissed myself. I, I'm here to ruin it. Okay, elevate, <laughs> elevate the class back. Okay. Yes, it's been a good week. Um, been busy for everybody. Obviously, in a couple of days, or by the time you read this, it may be happening. Uh, we've been preparing for Mix Fest. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, full theater, lots of people, lots of special guests. Uh, thank you for your support. Um, you know all the ways to reach us. So we don't need to do that again. Facebook and Twitter and all the other kinds of stuff. So a couple of updates. Let's get to those. Um, one is, let's clear up the USB key question, which is, if you buy a ticket and then you send Will or I an email and you have USB shipping in the subject line, that's when we'll ship it to you. We're not just shipping it to you just because you put it in there. That'd be very unfair to the people who bought tickets. You will receive those keys after MixFest. We've got something we're going to be doing afterwards so that we will get that information to you. There'll be something on our website page. So again, if you ordered USB keys, we'll be shipping them out afterwards because as a matter of fact, we don't get them till today, which is Thursday. Um, and um, so we want to make sure you're clear on that. Um, we've allotted some more tickets and we allot them out through the week. So there's still a few left again. If you still want to come, it's going to be a ball. Um, Let's mention, obviously, our family members, Chevy and the guys at Vintage King, we love you. And also all of our other sponsors for MixFest have just been great. Uh, Avid and Anthony and the cats over there, they're killer. Uh, Maureen and Destin at, um, at uh, Naris. We've got Colin and Ralph at McDSP. Everybody has stepped up. Um, in our chat room, as usual, from the Vintage King family is Jeffrey Ehrenberg. Yay, Jeffrey. Let's give Jeffrey a hand. He's there. And as usual, manning the chat room, he's not the DJ, he's the chat jockey, which we call the CJ Drew Make-A-Point Adams. Most important point, most high. There, there you go. go. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. Absolutely. The absolute most important high. Um, again, a big thank you to our host at Los Angeles Film and Recording School. Uh, Candace and Cecilia have been nothing but incredible. Um, so, we're excited. We want you to join us. And if not, we'll update you as to what went on. Uh, a lot going on besides mixing and other kinds of stuff. Um, you're getting an award and all, all kinds of things. So, why don't we get back to our very special guest and get that started. Oh, okay. Well, today, um, because we've been so hectic, um, I, I, I wasn't able to do a, 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 a pre-taped ITL. Next week, I promise you, we'll, have, uh, we'll be back on schedule with the pre-taped ITLs. But Bobby has very graciously, Bobby Ozinski has um, very graciously agreed to provide our ITL for us today, which is going to be on uh, a, a synopsis of, of uh, Music 3.0, one of his books that, that I've, I've read and I love. And it's Ozinski. also the name of his Ozinski. blog. Ozinski. Okay. And um, just, just before we jump into ITL, let me give you a little bit of background on Bobby. Uh, the first time I ever got asked to do a 5.1 mix, I was just terrified, and Bobby came in and basically did the 5.1 mix. Uh, I did a, uh, my normal 1.1 mix, or half point one mix, whatever you want to call it, and Bobby turned it into a 5.1, and we, we've, we've done several of those, and they've turned out great. Bobby on his own has done several hundred 5.1 mixes. He's always kind of been at the forefront of, of anything new. He, 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 
he definitely likes uh, keeping up and staying ahead of technology, but he's done 5 1 mixes for Hendrix, The Who, uh, Neil Young, um, uh, Willie Nelson. You, you just mentioned one earlier today. Who's that? Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden. Um, uh, he's an engineer, incredible just engineer. Uh, he's, a, he's a songwriter. Uh, he, he, he writes, uh, he's written uh, 20 or 30 books. Um, oh my gosh, I, I mean, he's taught at Berkeley. On and on and on. We'll go over a lot of his other credits lately, I mean, uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn this over to Bobby and um, we'll, Herb and I'll chime in, but Bobby's going to kind of take over. Uh, ITL today. So, Bobby, first of all, man, thank you so much for coming down. You're, I've, you've been a thank you and supporter for so long. And uh, shout out Eddie Schreier, how, yeah. how, how we met. First and and um, uh, I, I got a feeling this is going to be one of the one of the better shows we've done in terms of imparting information and knowledge because you've got a, a reputation for that and you've helped me so much. I, I mean. Uh, just, just this book alone, the Ultimate Guitar Tone book. I've learned so much oh, from that. Well, you're in this one, so I am in this one. This yeah. one is uh, uh, this book has been around for a minute, but it still seems relevant, doesn't it? it I guess the information is in, it's, it doesn't still keeps, go out of style. It keeps on selling. So uh, this is the Mix Engineer's Handbook. But what do you, what do you want to share with us today in terms of social media? It seems like it seems like everybody is trying to use the Kim Kardashian model and the Paris Hilton model for social media. Is, uh, are, are musicians doing that wrong? Well, there's a, a couple of things that have happened. Uh, the first thing is um, there's so many tools out there, which is the good part. The problem is there's so many tools out there. Precisely. So a couple of things wind up happening as a result. The first thing is musicians, artists, bands, engineers, producers, whoever's trying to deal with this, wind up spending so much time doing it that they don't have enough time, if they're good at it, they don't have enough time to get back to doing what they should be doing, which is making music. So the way around it is to be very efficient at what you do. And there are some tricks. Because most, mostly people will delve into Facebook and Google Plus and Twitter and, or blogs or whatever very haphazardly. Mm -hmm. And the haphazard way of doing things is what actually makes it difficult for them. So the first thing is to have a strategy. And the strategy basically is what's really important is your website, more important than anything. Because what social media should be doing is if this is your website, it should be feeding in to website. It should be taking everybody and feeding it in here. Well, why? The reason why is if you invest heavily into MySpace or Facebook or Google Plus and you have all of your followers there, what happens if tomorrow Microsoft comes in and says, oh, I want to buy Facebook. We want to buy Facebook. And guess what? We just want the underlying technology and we don't care about anything else. And Facebook goes down. Well, you've just lost all of those followers. Second thing is, you can't, you're limited in how much you can customize the information. Mm -hmm. Where on your website, you customize it to how you see it, it most fit your brand. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about a brand, it's one of those things where musicians and artists and producers, and they start to think, oh, baked beans, you know? <laughs> but a brand is important to us because we all have our brands. Mm -hmm. Dave Pensado has a brand. Do you know what your brand is? I have no clue. <laughs> well, Herb explains it to me on an hourly basis, and I'm starting to get it, but um, it sounds sometimes t like a dirty word, but, but when Herb explains it to me, uh, I understand it's just something that you're known for, and, and when people think of certain things, having been known for something, then they tend to think about you, which is, a, I'm guessing that's kind of what it is, isn't it? I didn't say that very well, did I? No, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, a brand is a sign of, of consistency and quality. So, for instance, if you go to McDonald's anywhere in the world, a Big Mac is going to taste the same. You know what to expect no matter where you go. That's kind of what I said. Guys, give me a break here. And, and Dave Pensado is known for high quality of mixes. Mm -hmm. And now you're known for the show, and you're known for your, 
your image and your demeanor. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what happens with a band or an artist. There's two things that a band and an artist can, has in a brand. The first is their sound, and the second thing is their, their image. There's been artists that have changed that to their detriment. I'll give you two examples. One was Neil Young. Neil Young was known as this roots rocker from the Buffalo Springfield, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, his own solo albums. And then he did an album called Trans, which was all electronic, which was a, with the Sinclair as the, the basis of it, or Fairlight, one or the other. And it was so different from the sound that everybody knew him from that it killed his career for about five years. It took him a long time to build back up the brand, the Neil mm -hmm. Young brand. Most recently, uh, Chris Cornell did the same thing. Chris Cornell, known for uh, excellent singer from Soundgarden, mm -hmm. all of a sudden he does an album with Timbaland, People which, <laughs> that's right, that's the first thing everybody went, well, wait a second, how does that work? And of course what it winds up doing is changing his sound enough that now his followers don't know what to expect. So that's a real problem. The second thing is image. Now, you have uh, artists like uh, Madonna who changed their images a lot. The Beatles, way back when, they changed their image from album to album, but you could, there was consistency in it. Consistency. Consistency. And that's the whole, what you're trying to do. And that's what you do at your website. Your website is your way of projecting your image of your sound, of your brand. So, getting back to where we started, all the social media is aiming towards your website. Relative to, like, say, an engineer, I don't want to get too far off subject, but, like, what, what one single thing should a, an, a young engineer coming along try to make sure that he incorporates in, within his own website to direct all this towards? Is that a, a question that you can answer? Yeah, well... <coughs> First of all, your, your website... You're directing them there, but you, you, you can also direct them to Wikipedia. You, you, you can also direct them to all music, but you try and just get them to f come to your website. And what's well, the first the, thing the, they should see? Well, there's two reasons. It, it, it's, first of all, it's information that you control. So the beauty of your, having your website is you can project as often as you want, and whichever way you want, you project that that knowledge, that useful knowledge that you want your, your, your fans, your user base, your clients to perceive. But the second most important thing is your mailing list. So this is where people will actually sign up for your mailing list. They come to your website, there's a sign up for the way, mailing list here, they sign up for it. This is your best way of communicating with people. And um, I, I give a lecture colleges in um, AES and NAM and whatever. It's called Social Media for Musicians and Engineers. And what it's based around is your, your mailing list is the one way that you can actually sell, promote, communicate directly to your, your fan base and hopefully they can do that back. That's, mu that's music 3.0. 3.0 is the first time that a musician, a, 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 an engineer, a producer can talk to their clients, their fans, and they can talk back, they can communicate. That, that never happened before. And, and now that you can do it, people crave it. But you have to be on top of it. Now you do it very well. Really? Yeah, yeah you do. And, and the way yeah, I can that's tell... Most, that's mostly Herb and Will, but thank you. Well, the way I can tell is just watching from Facebook posts that I see to me, where they'll mention about you and the show. And I'll go and I'll look at your tweets and I'll see how, how they, they refer to what you're, what you're doing all the time. Mm -hmm. That's, it's information. That's what people want. They want that information. What are you doing? Mm -hmm. What's coming up next? And we've that's got, the most important thing. We've got the greatest audience in the world, bar none. They just, they make it so easy to, to communicate with them. Yeah. What's, what's the biggest pitfall? What, 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 what when you go and you look at somebody's website that's incorporating some of these principles, what, what makes you go, oh my God, not that? What, what, what's one of the things that, that, that we shouldn't do? I'll look at it from a, a couple different uh, points of view. The first if you, if you, Are you through with that train yeah, of thought? Yeah, we can go here. Um, 
First of all, it's not so much what you want, it's what a search engine looks, like, looks for. So you're talking about Google or Bing or Yahoo, mm. mostly Google. Um, there are certain pitfalls that you can have. And, for, and the biggest one is you have broken links. You have broken links, you get penalized by Google. So if you were high up in the search engine rank and suddenly you're dropping down like a rock. Um, the next thing, you can juxtapose both, both of these, flash, having a lot of flash. So if people have, um, they have this great flash presentation that has their whole background and history and what they're doing, guess what? Google can't read flash. And because it can't read flash, as far as it's concerned, that stuff isn't there. So you're better off if you just ditch that whole flash thing, go for something less flashy, more informational, and a lot more text. So those are the two main things. The, se the third thing would be not having uh, a way for people to communicate with you that's easily apparent. So th those are the, the big things. Is, uh, do you agree with all that? I do. Um, you know, branding is a question of trust at some point in time. Well, you're a branding genius. Well, I don't know about all that, but it's just as a manager, if you're, if you're good at being a manager, you have to be thinking in those types of contexts. So for 20 years, um, I just never was comfortable enough that I would put my clients in the hands of somebody else, even though they were experts. So the thing that happens is, is that you end up learning from experts and then you develop your own game plan. So, you know, in our relationship, it was really about, let me treat you as an artist. And the mm. things and dynamics that come into branding have a lot to do with building on what you already were and then extending them into places. And what we have is a trusting relationship. Then we have to keep fulfilling it and surpassing it. And if we keep doing that, they'll keep coming. And so our job is to stay ahead of it. And what he's talking about is not only do you have to be efficient, you have to be consistent. And if you're consistently doing it and consistently thinking outside the box, you try to then extend that brand to other places. So. Let, let me take that another place when you talk about consistency. That's one of the most important aspects to Music 3.0. Mm -hmm. It's consistent communication. So for instance, if you're blogging, the only way a blog works is if your followers, your readers, know that every Thursday at noon or every day at 12.30 or whatever the, 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 the time increment is, they know that they can expect that blog to happen exactly that time. Yeah, her, her, her preaches that to us all the time. And, and it's the same with uh, Facebook posts and, and with Twitter posts. I mean, there are certain times of day that are actually more, con more convenient to do. Well, I read something about that. Like yeah. That. Uh, for instance, on Facebook, you, your posts are much better at um, 8 a.m., um, 4 p.m., and uh, 8 p.m. at night. Why is that? Well, at night especially, uh, most people are home yeah, from yeah. work. Yeah, exactly. Um, but there, there just seems to be certain times of the day that work better. And it's the better. same with, with, with Twitter. Twitter is, 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 an, is a different case because with Facebook posts, that lasts for a long time. Shelf life is, right. you know, days. And Twitter, the shelf life is half hour, yeah. an hour if you're lucky. Uh, when you when you first started managing me 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you you understood fully this thing about branding, but it just wasn't called that, right? It seems like it seems like this branding thing has been in existence by guys like you and Bobby forever, but it just now is being called branding. Different catchphrases during the time, but it used to be lumped under marketing yeah. at some point in time, and then marketing had in, in the way I looked at marketing, marketing was an umbrella. And under marketing, there were different components to that umbrella. It could be publicity, it could be sales, it could be, and there were elements of marketing in all those verticals underneath it. And well, what then you just were doing with Brian McKnight was branding, right? We um, just didn't I think, call it that. I think I think that I think to be fair, the notion of a good campaign had a heavy marketing component in it. How did you let people know, besides making a great record, that there was a great record? But back in that day, all the distribution points were controlled by the labels, and then you could affect what happened. We told you what to look at, we picked the imagery, we told you when it was on sale, you could only get the radio station, you could go to physical stuff. So, so the internet changed all that, gave the power to the consumer, and so now you're, you're making these relationships one by one, because you have access to them. And, and so, I mean, you give me undue credit, some of it I think I've earned, and we also, and, and I, I give 
credence to the team. But the bottom line is, if you don't have something good to brand, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. You can't just brand anything. And if you don't take it seriously, you're also going to be in trouble because you can't waste their time. Yeah, exactly right. You but, can't waste their time. But that's Music 3.0. Uh, I mean, the reason why I wrote Music 3.0 is I, I run in a lot of different circles. I don't know why. I know a lot of television people. I know a lot of financial people, a lot of, so of tech you, people. You're developing a 3D TV show, right? Yeah, yeah, I am actually. I, I've, I've um, actually produced two other music TV shows, um, Desert Island Music and um, Guitar Universe. Mm. And, uh, I love the Guitar Universe website, by the way. Yeah, I'm uh, on there it, all the time. That was a that was a cool show, uh, and I would like to do it more. Actually, it was a lot of fun when we did it. Uh, but yeah, I just happen to know a bunch of people in the 3D space. I don't know how, but I do. And uh, since I had a little bit of background both in music, and you know, in television production, we got together on this. And it's, uh, it's in development, but it's kind of moving its way up the chain here, the network chain. So we'll That's see what happens cool. in the future. Um, you've written, uh, what, I wrote this down somewhere. So you got 16 books. I just finished my 16th book. That's you got, fantastic. I got a couple of new titles for you to, to maybe think about. Why are you laughing? Yeah, hey. I, I think you could, you've got so many different varied titles, I, I think you could do a book on recording when rel relative humidity is below 20%. A lot of us would like to know about that. Okay, I like that, yeah. Uh, the unique differences between the marimba and the xylophone. <laughs> um, the effects. Could we do an ITL on that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I could even read my own writing, but trust me, it wasn't funny anyway. But I was going to try and trick Bobby, but I couldn't slip it in skillfully. I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'm not having a good day. But um, Bobby, when, you, when you're when you're doing a book like the Guitar Tone book, it's pretty evident that you're a guitar player and, and, and you mm -hmm. love the instrument. Uh, how, how do you how, how do you man? I, I've been thinking about writing a book for 20 years and. It just seems monumental. How do you find the time to do all this? How, how do you start a book like that? Do you, do you, because because you so succinctly write them all for me. I mean, you'd think that you hung out and, and we were talking about what the book should be about because I, I, I learned from all of these books. Well, there's a couple of, of things. The first thing is I do it to learn something myself. And the people that are in the book that I interview are far smarter than I am. Like you were in my first book on, on in the the mixing engineer's handbook, and mm -hmm. I learned so much I from you. I still get comments about that book. That's still. very cool, well, I, it's, and it's still selling. But I, I understand your way of working is so much different than now you know, it is. Well, but but it's still valid. Um, it, well, the, again, I try to make these kind of evergreen, so it's conceptual material. <laughs> he said evergreen. Yeah, okay, well, evergreen, yeah. That's no, that's, that's a term that Herman Will just taught me, evergreen. Oh, okay. Great term. Absolutely. Yeah, well, and it's, and it's true. It's true, Absolutely. yeah. But essentially the information, and, and there's a lot of information in the audio business that is kind of falling by the wayside because of the way the audio business has changed, the music business has changed, where it used to be, there was a very clear uh, master apprenticeship, master apprentice relationship. If you were a, a second engineer, you, you would learn from Dave Pensado, and mm -hmm. some still do. Mm -hmm. But there's so it, it's so much less now nowadays mm -hmm. because everybody has a Pro Tools, mm -hmm. you know, uh, system in their home. They they tend to you know try to do it on their own. Now the problem I see in this is the fact that there's a lot of institutional knowledge that's kind of falling by the Absolutely. wayside. So one of the reasons why I try to write these books is, is to at least have some place where the insti institutional knowledge exists so people that are learning 20 years from now can go back and say, oh, that's the way they did it back then. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or they, oh, they did it like that. You know, it's, whatever. It's, 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 it's an amazing point. I, the, the corollary, um, when you've been in a position you're in or Dave's in or sometimes I'm in where people want to learn from you, mm -hmm. and that has a great responsibility to it. I used to call it the griot tradition, G-R-I-O-T, because when I came up through the business, what you did is you sat around and learned, and people kind of drummed while they told you and taught you. Mm -hmm. And you just said, I can remember sessions for hours 
with great musicians or great executives or whatever, and not only were they imparting the information would stay, you were just sucking it in mm -hmm. and learning it. Then you went and practically applied it and you learned. And that tradition has gone away mm -hmm. at a time when there's actually more info but less good filters to figure out what to do with the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's harder for them. Um, and it's really important, and, and I give you credit for this, that when you do something like this or you're an author, an acclaimed author mm -hmm. like you, that's invaluable stuff for people to differentiate themselves from the mass and step up and go, my game is better. Yeah, yeah, and, if, yeah. and if you're too lazy to do that, you're going to just stay down in the, yeah. in the weeds, don't you That's think? Right. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, how many studios in town used to have two rooms? Mm -hmm. How many facilities had two or three or four? And mm -hmm. there's so many. And, and it was so great because you would see somebody in the hall and, and you talk about what you're yeah. doing and you go in yeah. and you look what they're doing and that doesn't happen oh, as often yeah. anymore. You'd leave the door open so everybody could hear what you were doing because yeah. yeah. you were so proud of it. <laughs> and, right. and then like... Um, they would come in and comment and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I met so many people like that. Yeah. Uh, and it yeah. was good for business. Yeah, I, I had Enterprise, I was working. Uh, I had first the front room and I left the door open because I knew... Uh, uh, Velvet Revolver Slash and those guys and Andy Wallace who's an incredible engineer yeah. I love to death yeah. uh, they were in, in one of the rooms and I left my door open they all would all, all drop in and say hello yeah, and it's it's just, it's just cool I mean, it was a cool thing absolutely. Yeah, absolutely it doesn't happen when you're working at home that's the problem no, no, no. Yeah, there's, there's advantages to the home thing you know there's disadvantages too but uh, well that's an interesting point you make because part of the key for the audience is to know how to navigate the advantages and disadvantages, yeah, yeah, don't you think? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And, and you, you have to, you know, sometimes in my conversations or when I'm on panels or talking about, you know, I, I talk about perspective. You, you can't just be loaded with the tools and not apply perspective to them. Mm -hmm. So you take knowledge, you take other stuff, and then step back and add the human perspective to it, and then you can conjure up what to, look, we do it all the time with this in, endeavor we went on 18 months ago mm -hmm. and we're constantly blown away at where it is mm -hmm. and I'm constantly spending time with you about you know perspective and mm -hmm. how do we approach it so we all have the same task I'm not trying to take over the show but yeah. it's fascinating that take it over. that you know but just that you teach it yeah. and it confirms that the dynamics make sense so we're actually doing here what a lot of them don't get to do yeah absolutely mm -hmm. it, um, just because I could be the third worst interviewer on earth, and I've managed to blur the line between ITL and going into some other segment. Let's tie up this social media thing for ITL, and then we'll, then we'll, then we'll have a, a, a break and go into, into the, the real interview. Okay. So, so we, we've established what, what to do, why to do it, the importance of the website, things not to do. Um, is it is it, it's probably like for me I just didn't have the motivation to do any of this myself are there are there inexpensive ways to get someone to design a website for you or is it something that that if you're limited fund wise you're just gonna have to roll up your sleeves and do it yourself uh, right now there's a lot <laughs> well it, it's funny because there seems to be a new trend in music in music 3.0 especially and that's the concept of the fifth Beatle now the fifth Beatle, <laughs> as we know it, was a was a Billy Preston, was a George oh, wow. Martin, wa, wa, was a musician. That's, that's, that's well, interesting. In this case, it's the webmaster. Yeah, absolutely. And it's yeah, a, we don't do that, concept. by the way. It, it, when, when I answer a question on Pensada's place, if you see my picture, it's me. And uh, Will will answer a couple, but it, we clearly make sure you know it's Will. It's uh, I hate that. That's well, I, I'm not saying they're a proxy for for the artist. I am. They're, Oh, yeah, okay. I don't like it. No, I agree, but it's not that they're doing it. It's they're setting up the website. They're setting up the social media uh, component to them. They're, doing, they're taking care of all that. They're saying, okay, you have to post today. This is what you have to do. And, and, and that tends to be happening a lot, where, you know, especially young bands. You can feel bands. the funniness of that, though. But, no, it's, it, it has, they're not posting for them. Right. They're, they're setting, setting, up, setting it up for them to post. Mm -hmm. they're, they're overlooking. They're the webmaster. They're, the, they're not posting yeah, anything. Like one we, thing about Herb and Will is they've never told me, to, oh, you've got to get on, you've got to do this more. No, it's very organic. When mm -hmm. I wake up in the morning, I can't wait to see what people have said, yeah. you know. And, well, 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 we haven't told you yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> well, tell me this, uh, how can I tie up this particular I ITL well, and, and I think, move on to the well, next Well, the, the cool part is that I think 
because of your brilliance and your insight, the the ITL going into the interview, we're already doing it. Mm -hmm. So so, but what's what's interesting to me as a question is, as you perceive it now, and your your web your webmaster analogy, which is about the system. And interestingly enough, to your point, sometimes because of the consistency that he talked about, and this happened ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Sometimes people who could authenticate your voice would need to do it because maybe they were on a plane. Yeah. And those people were looking for that blog at 11 o'clock. So sometimes if it's done purposefully and thoughtful, it keeps that trust and relationship going. Oh, yeah. It doesn't I, have to be. I understand that. Better to be just I'm James. See, that. But, oh, go ahead. I think that it's, it absolutely works for someone to be that proxy in the middle, mm -hmm. provided that everybody knows that's the case. Mm -hmm. if, if you're saying that that's you're a Snoop Dogg when you're not, right. that's a bad thing. In fact, yeah. though, but if right. you're saying, sure. I, I'm the manager, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the guy well, that's like, supposed like to Like if somebody this. says, can you get Serban to be on the show, and Will answers that, that, that that's totally in line. But if somebody says, um, how did you record the vocal, or how did you mix the vocal on... Uh, uh, single ladies. Yeah. Uh, I got to answer that. Yeah. I, yeah. Nobody oh, else can answer that. I, I just answered that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> did, I, did I do it right? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. So as you, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> and I bit the bait. I swallowed the hook. You got me. Well, you usually get me. Hook, line, where's second. it? Where's it going in your head? You got new oh, services. You he, got. He new mentioned stuff. Herb. He mentioned this thing about. Um, I know you know about this, the NFC digital wallet. Have you heard about that? I have, but... Um, That's really cool. Well, there's a number of things on the horizon that, that are going to expand the technology available for musicians, and artists, engineers, producers. Um, the first thing is called NFC, Near Field Communication. Absolutely. Near Field Communication is, is making your cell phone your digital wallet. Mm -hmm. Already in Europe, if, you're, if you buy a train ticket, all you have to do is That's you it. Is that like pass the by reader. Technology? It, it, it's not even that because it's actually a radio frequency. So oh, it it, as soon as you're close. In terms of music, I'm not sure that people have done this yet, but I think they will. And that's um, trading uh, playlists, for instance. Mm -hmm. we come into, we're in close proximity, and automatically our playlist will, will, we'll switch. will mm -hmm. switch. Which, by the way, do you do that? Do you, do you tell people yeah, your playlist? Yeah, well, uh, very selectively. I do it with Dylan and a couple of other people. Dylan sends me his playlists. Um, I've got a few friends that I could care less what they listen to. But I <laughs> and then I've got a few friends that I, I, they keep me current. They help me because I don't have time to follow everything. My daughter keeps me extremely current, too, with different things she's listening to. But I bet your audience would love your playlist. You know what? We're working on that. Yeah. We're, as soon as we Good. get a little time to work on the website, um, I definitely want to... Um, have something like a top ten things I've been listening to yeah. that month, and and then yeah. uh, reference. have references because mm -hmm. references. I don't. I don't. It's, we shouldn't really call them references because that's not what I do. It's more like just things I want to listen to and make sure that I'm in the ballpark. I yeah. don't try to copy their sound. I just try to copy the energy and feel because I rarely listen to the. I'm not going to say the G E N R E word, but I, I I rarely listen to things that sound like what I'm mixing. I like to listen to, to other types of music and just make sure I can follow that on energy wise and vibe wise. I, I love Spotify. Drew will tell you I'm, I'm on Spotify a good seven eight hours a day. It's just it's just been it's so much fun. Well, you know that's the other thing. One of the other things that's changing in music, and that's the the transition from uh, purchasing a file to a subscription basis. Mm -hmm. And you know, what really brought that home to me a couple years was uh, my, uh, my uh, producing partner, television production partner, Bella Cagnato. Mm -hmm. She asked me to uh, look at her computer, at her Mac, because it was running slowly. And I looked at it, and she had like 40 gigs worth of, of audio files, worth of music files mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, that's the problem right there, you know, because she had no space left on the drive. Sure. But it was all because of this massive library that she had, which goes away as soon as you subscribe. Mm -hmm. And not only that, you have it on your iPhone and your iPad and Anywhere your computer you and get. anything you want at yeah. the same time. So now we're, with Spotify finally kind of cracking it in the States, now we're seeing uh, the ball starting to roll down, downhill for uh, subscription music. And supposedly, Apple 
iTunes has a subscri subscription service right around the corner, and that will just blow it out of the water. Herb, Herb, Herb is like, Herb and I discuss quite spiritedly some of the pros and cons of the subscription model. What's your take on it? Uh, if you're an end user, it's fabulous. Incredible. It's fabulous. Absolutely. If you're in the music business, it's tremendously horrible because the payout is just so minimal. It's horrible. But, you know, that brings us to another premise. And, and th this is something, again, I've come up with in, in Music 3.0. Your music is your marketing. When you begin to look at your music as a product, precisely. once upon a time, yes, it was your product. Now, it's, it's your marketing effort. And you're, you have to make your, your money elsewhere. Exactly. This For has example, to you, 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 let, you give your music away on Spotify essentially cheap in order to bring people into your concerts. Is that one example of what you're talking concerts, about? Concerts, merchandise, publishing, all right. those things. Right. And that, that's really all where you're making money. All the things that a musician hates to do and yeah. think about. Yeah, absolutely. But, but We now have to think about. I have a, a, a very good uh, attorney friend who's uh, one of the top guys in town. And he gave me a statistic the kind of blew me away a, a few years, years ago. He said that from the beginning of time of recorded music, 90% of what an artist brought in was from touring. Absolutely. As opposed to, you yeah, know, rec good, record sales. Is that, high, is that high, 90%? Oh, yeah. It always has been. Yeah. Wow. And, and when you think of it in that it perspective, makes sense. It, it, it kind of does put your music as a product into perspective. Yeah, I, the, definitely. The, the harsh word I used to use, which people had to put their head around. I've been making this debate and this point for the last five or six or seven years that at some point in time, music became commoditized. Yeah, yeah. And, but what, what com does that mean, Herb? Well, just as a commodity, it's used differently. It's not about the end result necessarily being bought. It's a tool for other things. And the other analogy I make is music has kind of been the bitch child of tech. Yeah. They've put that girl on the street and use her every which way they can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, but, but what it speaks to is the power of it. Yeah. Because they continue to do that, but they figured out that it's a, you use music to do other things with it. Sell devices, power games, mobile, other yeah. kinds of stuff. It's not necessarily the end game of buying recorded music. So the only complaint I've had, which is not really a complaint, is I'm trying to be honest with artists who are making music and going, don't necessarily, there will be some outliers who break through this and make money because of their music, but you're going to use your music now as a freemium, mm -hmm. and then you're going to have to try and figure out other things. But you have freemium, to tell them, the but you have to tell them the truth, which is getting that to a touring base where you can make money, and getting that to a merchandising place that makes money. That takes time. Yep. So and is that what I'm doing Saturday? I'm touring, kind of. Kind of. I've talked to you about that for two years, but the notion I, I, in I, our I, space, I and listen, I don't so. bore you with this stuff, but the notion in our space was how to take a space that has such passionate people, where you guys are heroes to these people, incredible knowledge base. Everybody that sits in that chair is smart, mm -hmm. and they're, and they're broad-based folks. And bring something to that space, which means allowing them to get to know you in ways they can, allowing them to get to know Jack Joseph and all the incredible guests that your role dance mm -hmm. has brought. And what we found is that they want to get to know them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I and, want to get to know them. And, and me too. And so, you know, when I... We when work the idea together every me, day, but we never get a chance to talk like this. So the extension to you is that it's kind of music 3.0. We applied it in a different place. Mm -hmm. And part of a commodity is that you can take a commodity and start to do niche things with it. Yeah. And then those niche things in it, it depends on how you think about it. So I find it just fun. <laughs> That's the new music business. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an Absolutely. niche business. Let me ask you guys, let me ask you guys yeah. this. Okay, we, we've talked about Music 3.0 relative for artists. Um, how, how, Herb, Herb, Herb and Bobby, how would you apply the techniques of the website specifically to a young engineer starting out and a young producer starting out? Not, not an artist, but like, like, a, a, like the guys watching our show, the guys that you and I talk mm -hmm. to, the guys mm -hmm. that we love, the guys that just warm our heart. They're so passionate, and, but yet they're in a smaller market. They don't get to work it. Larrabee under a big time engineer. How, how, how can they apply Music 3.0 to, to, to where they are right okay, now? Okay, you're talking about an engineer or producer, right? I'm talking about the guy, uh, the guy that's just kind of starting out. Yeah. He's a pretty good, pretty good engineer, yeah. pretty good producer. He, he, he's not earning a full living with it yet. Three things. Okay. Three things. First thing, on the website, 
if it's updated frequently with what you're doing now. You're working with this person. You're working at this place. Mm -hmm. You're you're uh, talking to this person about perhaps doing something. It's informational thing. And first of all, it and that goes on your website. It goes on your website or your blog, or, or if the blog is tied in with the website, on, on mm -hmm. you know, as some of That's them are. That's even better, right? It's even better, of course. Uh, the second thing would be the mailing list, and the mailing list does much the same thing. You do it once a quarter or once every couple months, and say, "This is who I've just worked with." This is who is coming up. And what that does, it people that kind of forgot about you will remember and say, oh, yeah, I, maybe. I, I don't see. like getting emails where somebody's trying to sell me something, even if it's selling me their skills and abilities. But you're saying send an email when you've already finished something that's, that's, that has some bearing oh, on. Oh, yeah. No, it's more like and I get newsletters all the time. And, and the, there's one I get that's great from Airshow Mastering out in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Yeah. And it comes out once a quarter, and it says, these are the people that we work with. And guess what? These two won Grammys. And I'll go, wow, you know, that's cool. I, didn't, I, I didn't know you guys were doing that. So the next time uh, I see David from, from uh, Air Show, I'll say, Man, hey, that was cool that you did that. I, I didn't know you worked on, mm -hmm. on a dead reissue or whatever. Let me stop it, because I get a lot of kids, and I'm not, I'm not complaining, guys. I love you dearly. But I get a lot of kids that send me 20 songs. Yeah. Can you listen to all of these songs and tell me what I need to do? Yeah. And what the, um, I just don't have time. It tears my heart out that I don't have time to do that because everything about me wants to do that. But that's not a very effective means of using 3.0, right? Or am I wrong? Is it? No. For, see, for a musician, it's a little bit different. For a musician, it's you're never trying to sell somebody music 3.0. Right. You're presenting the information. You're informing. As soon as you start in the hard sell, people back off immediately. Mm -hmm. Even if you're a big star, mm -hmm. you can't do that. The only thing you can say is, hey, guess what? The new record's coming out. This is what's on it. Or guess what? We just work with so-and-so, and this is what we did. Mm -hmm. And if your fans are passionate enough, they'll go, I want that. I want to find How do we get that? Tell me. So, so let me see if I understand both of you correctly. Instead of sending an email to me saying, um, will you listen to this song, they should send an email out and say, you know what, I just worked with, a, with, a, with the, the biggest act in the region. I just finished a mix. I'd love for you to listen to it or, or wrap yeah. the whole process a little differently. Well, would you think differently about it when you got that, an email like that? Well, right now it's just a matter of time. Herb yeah. is, and Will are working... Uh, incredibly hard to find a system where I can uh, listen to all of these songs and, and give, give, give critiques and stuff. And, 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 and uh, for me personally, that was uh, a part of why we put the website together, is to have a format where we can funnel all this into one spot. Well, well also, and, and because I want to hear something about 5.1 and talk about your books oh, yeah, too, yeah. Um, but I, I would say this really quickly. We're in an evolution that's a digital industrial revolution. Mm -hmm. And so people are figuring out how to use the tools. I get the same number of requests to listen to stuff. I get inundated with manager requests. And I'm sure everybody else does too. And I just tell people I can't. And, and they will but learn that over time. No, that, that that me. Well, but, but they're very smart. And they, they always send it and say, I know you're busy if you can. And I'll go, well, I can't because I am busy. And as people evolve and they trust you in that, that, that relationship, I think it's okay to go, I can't, because it would change the mission statement, and really soon you would just have those folks and miss all the other people that you're informing. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think it's important to be, to be honest with them about that kind of stuff, but I'm not oh, surprised yeah. that they do it. Well, but, you and I have always been honest. Don't forget, Dave, when someone reaches out to you, it's different than them reaching out to fans or clients or potential clients. Right. It, it's a different communication, and, and what we're talking about is more like the, they're talking to their local peeps first. Mm -hmm. You know, hey, guess what, guys? This is what I've been working on. This is what I have coming up, and, and mm -hmm. here I have a list, and it's cool, right. you know? They would probably approach it differently talking to the, their their circle of friends and acquaintances. Then can can we do something so we combine time here? Sure, sure. So why don't we why don't we include corner office here in a second? Get that graphic going. Mm -hmm. So we got questions coming, and you got questions okay. coming because we don't want to run out of time. Yeah, yeah. One thing so I did so want to get to is um, get to it? is he he mentioned that Korea was going to like uh, uh, a 
stupid bandwidth size All and, of, and, and, yeah. and, and the implications. I'm, I know you know this, sir, but the implications of that bandwidth means that MP3s are going to be obsolete. You can send full-on wave files. Well, already there's a couple of uh, websites that you can do. HD tracks, for instance, mm. you, you can go. They have 10,000 albums that are done at 96K that you can, you can download, mm. including uh, they, they just licensed some Stones tracks as well, some Stones you, albums. You buy them, though. Or, yeah, or, or yeah, not, yeah. It's 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 it's, it's, it's a, a purchase. Thing. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, but okay. but that being said, in in Asia, their bandwidth is their average bandwidth is far higher than what we have here. I mean, it's nothing to get you know 50 meg over there. Mm, sure. And when you get to that point where it's it's everywhere, suddenly you don't have to worry about compressing your your audio file to make it smaller. So, so. Now you can send you know regular. 48K, 44.1 PCM can, we can send pictures of Drew out in HD. You could, actually, yes. Drew, you got something from the corner I office? do. I got a lot of stuff. A lot of questions. Give us the names first, Drew. Yep. Yeah. Uh, first one's from Richie Palooza. What is, uh, when you were talking earlier, Herb, uh, GRIOT, what does that stand for? Does that stand for anything? Tell, tell, them, tell them to look it up, and let's use our time. G-R-I-O-T. Look it up on the web. And then let's, because we got Bobby here, let's, let's get some info from Bobby. Okay. Sounds good. G-R-I-O-T? G-R-I-O-T. Yeah, okay. It's an African um, tradition is what it is. From Thomas yes. Kobrick, I'm curious what Bobby thinks is the least understood aspect of production for those new to it. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah. As far as production is concerned, I would say it's um, uh, knowing when to say when. And, and what that means is a lot of... Uh, new producers don't know when they should keep on going or when they should stop. And this is on any, any kind of uh, creative endeavor, I think. Can I, can I toss something in? Back when I was first playing guitar, I was like, you know, a young teenager and, and I'd be produced. I, I was terrified and I always felt like the psychological component of producing that ability to draw things out of a musician yeah. or, or construct an environment where you put four great players together yeah, yeah, yeah. and just pick the right exact players. I, I always thought that was a, 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 a least understood component, yeah. too, too, along with what you said, which I agree 100%. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next Thanks, question, Thomas. From Adam Akil. Bobby, which band's artists challenged you the greatest through a recording mastering process, and what did you learn? Chal oh, huh. you know, one in particular. Um, Amin Tobin, who's a, a, a worldwide known uh, electronic artist. And I'd never done electronic music before. Mm. And I did a, I, I mixed a, a, his stereo album and one 5.1 that went into a game, it went into, I uh, can't remember what it was. Mm. But, um, and it was a load of fun, but it was electronic. So it's kind of like, okay, no, what's the foundation here? <laughs> you know, okay, what, what's supposed to ha happen where? So it was a learning process, and that I found that it was uh, kind of uh, challenging. Uh, I have a question from Herb in Culver City. Um, <laughs> which we, this is probably a whole separate show, but give, give our guys a sort of sense of 5.1 and what they do at home. What, what, what can you impart to them? Can you uh, do 5-1 at home? Uh, about that. Sure. Okay. Sure. Um, the biggest thing is calibration mm -hmm. and uh, calibrating your system. Um, chances are you won't be able to place the speakers in the correct place, and, and even in big studios that aren't constructed for that, we can't do it anyway. And, you know, re remember, I think, I remember. as a matter of fact, that we had a door where yeah, the speaker should go. Yeah. And, and But see, none of that Dan matters. Dan spend a day setting those speakers up, too. Yeah, it takes a long time. But really, when it's all said and done, it's calibrating correctly. And if, if your ear is hearing everything in the right proportion, regardless of where the speakers are, you're 90% of the way there. It's not ideal, but you can certainly do you can certainly work. So the monitoring element Monitoring Because you can't just put on a set of headphones. No, unfortunately, you can't. And, and what about, what about the, uh, the conversion, the, uh, the processing part of it? Is that, is that hard to acquire? The processing? You, you mean in, in terms of compression and EQ? And, and yeah, stuff? yeah just, just the center channel. You know, all that has to be processing. You can't just, you can't just record that stuff. It yeah, has to I, go through a processor, a 5.1 processor. Uh, That's what you remember. You used to bring, bring your personal money. Yeah. You know, 
there's a lot of systems that are 5-1 ready anymore. Uh, I love the JBL system, for instance, the 4328s. And um, they have a little controller that looks like a, a TV remote. Oh, okay. And you can do everything from that little TV it, remote. Is it worth learning? Is 5-1 going to be around? I guess that's the value. Yeah, question. I mean, not so much for music. Uh, <laughs> what else is there? Well, for, for oh, film for games. and, and oh. television and games oh, okay. and stuff like that. But, boy, I, everybody I've talked to has said that, you know, it's just dropped off a cliff in t terms of... Uh, but automobile manufacturers haven't embraced it. Uh, they that did, would keep it going, right? They did for half a second, and, uh, you know, it's kind of fallen by the wayside. You know, it's another one of those things where there's the inconvenience factor. The, it, what, what they, the, the consumer electronics people call it the wife factor. Mm -hmm. And what it means is there's too many pieces of ugly audio gear, and the wife is going, oh, get that out of here. Oh, you mean you have a cable there? Oh, get that out of here. <laughs> so you're kind of reduced to, well, here's some speakers across the front. That's it. You know? I'm going through that with MixFest. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. that's another Drew, story. you got another good question? I do. Um, from LX Oreo, would you suggest to do mix and master on different days with fresh ears or rather in a single session depending on the complexity of the song? Oh, definitely in different days on different systems. If you're doing it yourself, which is kind of dicey yeah, to begin I with. Say different planets. Yeah, you, you really got to go to a different monitor system than what you mixed on because you can never tell what the problems are otherwise. Good point. Good question, Drew. Yeah, also, good one. Uh, we got time for one more? Sure. Yeah. Uh, from Tom, I'm going to mess this up. Tommy Blanica. Sorry, Tommy. Uh, any 5.1 music mixes that actually enhance the song listening experience? Examples to listen to. Elliot Shiner has done some great ones. Mm. Yeah. Steely Dan, Eagles, mm. things like that. And, and mm. um, we all learned as we did it. We, he, we all made a lot of mistakes in the beginning, and we all got better as it went Mar on. Margoloff, too, Bob Margoloff. Bob He's Margoloff. done some incredible 5-1 mix. That's right. And, and again, we all got better. And we all, I, I know my philosophy changed on the whole thing a, as okay. it went along. Okay. So, yeah, that, you know, that, that's where I would start right there. I don't know if I ever told you, but the first one we did, I can't remember, but um, pa Panasonic actually used that as a giveaway for their 5-1 systems as what it should sound like. We, we, we were yeah. like one of the first people that they actually felt was good enough to give away our mix in order to see what their system should yeah. really do. But we did some unique things. We put the, the reverb returns in the back, when I say we, you did, the reverb returns in the back speakers. And we didn't have that cross panning stuff that just irritates you. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. very musical. Mm -hmm. I still didn't enjoy it. I still don't enjoy 5.1. I'm telling you the rosin bag. <gasps> yeah. Oh, batter's box. Yeah, absolutely. We're ready? ready? Loose yeah, up we're going to, uh, Bobby, ag Loose up your <laughs> Bobby agreed to do something a little different. We're going to do the most pure batter's box ever. There's no, Fire him. there's no herb, there's no category, no nothing. I'm going to give oh. him a thing and he can draw from his entire psychological twisted mind. Okay, let's get twisted. Vocals. Vocals. Uh, singer comfort, first of all. Excellent. Um, no, I only get one. I'll go for two. Go, go for two. Herb, Herb, Herb is the judge. Herb, I'm, I'm judges. Playing. Oh, well, well, when I say that, uh, singer comfort means um, temperature of the room, the lighting, uh, the headphone mix. Uh, that's, I think that's primary to get the most out of a vocalist. Acoustic guitar. Great instrument. Ooh, J200? That'll work. Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite? My favorite, J, uh, J45. Uh, acoustic piano. Acoustic piano. Uh, different methods of recording. Everybody seems to have their own method. and I, I was just thinking that because the first thing that popped in my mind was XY technique like uh, Swedeen was showing the other day. I, and, uh, and they all sound good. You know, I, I, there's never one that I've heard that I've said, oh, well, yeah, there is one. And that was, uh, I remember back when I was young trying to experiment and getting a great sound, and I heard that uh, uh, Elton John. That's not Batter's Box. Oh, say I'm that sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Electric guitar. 
uh, great, again, great instrument, great amplifier, great instrument. Great player. Great player. Overheads. XY and um, picking up the main sound of the kit. Cool. Speaking of which, uh, kick drums, uh, live kick drums. With or without a head. That's true. I like it without. Yeah. There's a joke there, but don't go there. <laughs> yeah, I, this is, absolutely. Uh, program kick drums. Hmm. Finding one that works. Okay. Uh, snares. Using the right microphone. And, and I've been I've had my eyes opened up by Ken Scott recently. Do you get something better than the 57? What is it? KM84, top and bottom. Whoa. And that's how he got his classic sounds for Bowie and Super Tramp and everything. I never thought condenser mics. Yeah. Room mics. Room mics. Uh, correct placement in a great sounding room. A stereo bus. A stereo bus. Don't overload it. Go gently on the, the mix bus compressor. Excellent. Uh, live bass. Live bass, great DI, great player, great instrument. You're a big tube DI fan, aren't you? Yeah, you saw that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I just laughs> you, read, you read the blog. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, know, I know that about you. Yeah. Strings. Live strings. Live strings. Um, great players, great room. En engineer who knows how to record. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, Rhodes. Fender Rhodes? Yeah. Ooh, uh, I'm gonna stump you. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go until yeah. I stump you. So okay. just get rid. Okay, St stereo, uh, stereo roads with the nice chorus going left and right and um, suitcase. Oh, oh, oh. Also, uh, with the roads, one that's that's set up well because they all play differently and they sound yeah. different depending on how they're set up. Yeah. Um, background vocals slash choirs. Background vocals. Uh, technique. The Bruce Redeen technique is great for background vocals, which is you do one pass uh, and then everybody steps back one uh, uh, a step and do another pass and to make everything bigger, keep on going back further. Last pitch. I am not stump him yet. So. Uh, <laughs> favorite vocal mic under $1,000? Uh, 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 the Mojave. Crack. <laughs> Which side are you on, Herb? No, the, the guest. <laughs> Traitor. Damn. Do us a favor. Mention your website, where to get the books, Music 3.0. And, 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 and the, the, the blogs, too, because the blogs are incredible sources of information. Absolutely. Music 3.0 book, the second edition, is coming out in two weeks. So this is the first edition. Second edition will be out in two weeks. It'll have uh, five additional chapters and it's very nice. Nice. Um, my website is bobbyosinski.com, B-O-B-B-Y-O-W-S-I-N-S-K-I.com. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two blogs. My music production blog is bobbyosinski.blogspot.com. And the Music 3.0 blog, which is talking about the music industry and all that, Both are all that stuff. That's uh, music, the number three, point, P-O-I-N-T, zero, Dot blogspot .com. But you can you can get uh, I I I found them at, on the website. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and apparently Drew is going to name some winners uh, from questions, which will which um, which we'll do, or we'll mention. Do you, do you have them now, or do you want to mention them next uh, week? Well, just I'll, I'll hit them on uh, Facebook. Right, so we'll I let you know that next week and hit you on our page, so you can win some of the books. Uh, real quick information before we get out of here. First of all, you can't. You've got to come back. Uh, I'll be. Happy to. Love having you. I'm Love the information. If we ever take a great. vacation, let's let him host the damn show. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, MixFest, uh, get your tickets. It's there. It's coming up. You know, go to our website for all the information. I'm Lots of folks I'm coming. I'm about MixFest. Lots of stuff. Don't be nervous. we we got to do stuff. we got to get out of the show. The other thing is um, uh, uh, our good friends at Vintage King are going to uh, have a certain preamp giveaway that we're going to come back with. In a minute, we'll we'll stay tuned. But that's coming up. You know, this is a place you come get stuff and learn and learn things. Um, again, thank you so much, Bobby. It's a, a pleasure. pleasure to meet you. Absolutely, Dave. Take us home. Um, 
I, I recently met a cat, uh, Max Belladonna. I hope I said his name mm -hmm. right. What an inspiring human being. Yay, the Max is from Italy. Uh, the Maxster, man, I'm telling you. Two of them. Uh, Manager I, two. I, I don't, I don't want to get overly sentimental, but I, I, I have not met a person more inspiring in the last five years. Yeah. And then, uh, guys, um, <clears throat> my friend Keith Andes and I worked a lot with Heavy D, and just want to say bye to Hev. And um, bring some good questions, try to stump me, and we'll see you at MixFest. <laughs>